Shabbat Shalom. Come into the warmth of our space here. And we welcome Shabbat. This is an invitation for all of us to welcome Shabbat into our hearts, whether it be with our voices or with a gentle sway, tapping of our feet, even the clapping of hands, snapping fingers. We begin with a melody. blessing to have a job where you love coming to work. Now, I have to tell you, uh, I'm not going to lie, that is not always the case with being a rabbi. But on Friday nights here at Temple, coming to this service, it really is true. Um, there's a sense of just peace and togetherness that is really very special. And so we love coming to work, although since it's Shabbat, we have to call it unwork. On this Shabbat, we would like to invite Rochelle Myers to the Bima to light the Shabbat candles in honor, and this has to be a misprint. It says her 55th birthday, but there's no way you're 55. Um, but, but anyway, she's coming up, whatever her age might be, and uh, lighting the Shabbos candles on page 13. Light is a foundation of life, yet impossible to touch. 
light as flowers growing and fruit trees blossoming, photosynthesis and rainbow shimmering, light as energy and romance, enlightenment and lightning, light as red and violet and magenta and blue, lasers and campfires, warmth and illumination, the sunset and the dawn. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav Mitzivanu L'chalik Ner Shel Shabbat Blessed are you, Adonai our God, eternal source of the universe, who hails us with mitzvot and commands us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Baruch Ata continue on page 20. There are parts of this prayer book we rarely get to use, in this case because this blessing written, I believe, by Rob, uh, Cantor Smolash um, introduces the blessing over the bread, which we really uh, don't do at Shabbat services very often. But uh, without the blessing, I think it's really a beautiful uh, reading in and of itself. So if we could pray responsibly by paragraph. Call and response, one voice sings, all voices echo. One breath streams out, all breath streams in. But a third braid seals the two, binding all three into one. Continue with Lechado Di on page 34. 34. Shalom, Mater and Bala. Come, Miss Imha, let's all know. Tof 
together at the top of page 45 if fear is like a rock then let me be a hammer if sorrow is a fire then let me be the sea when challenges arise may my heart increase in strength like the moon that shines brighter when the darkness falls Baruch Aravim. Aravim. blessed are you O God who makes the evening fall page 49 we are loved by an unending love. We are guided by the still small voice within us. We are loved by an unending love. A ne'er tamid to be tended from generation to generation. And a gentle love. Giving meaning to our existence, structure to our lives and of all the generations who have embraced their covenant. Baruch atah Adonai, ohev amo Yisrael.
On page 57. <laughs> Ulchetavtam <laughs> Al mezuzot peitecha uvishe arrecha leman kizkeru vaasite met kol mitzvotai mitem kedoshim lelohechem ani Adonai lelohechem asher hotzeti etchem meretz mitzrayim. Yot lachem lelohim ani Adonai lohechem emet. As we turn in our prayer books to page 62, we recognize as we sing this prayer, Micha Mocha, that we are proud here in America to be living in a place where we have freedoms. We also recognize that elsewhere in the world and at times in our country, the challenges to those freedoms are real. But as Jews, we remember to that seminal moment, that time in our people's history when we first tasted freedom, freedom from slavery that was a symbol of what was we pray to come. And so as we think and pray for the freedom of all humankind today and in the future, these words ring true once again as we join together in, Mich in Micha Mocha. Adonai. 
den hem arkifada Adonai et Yaakov, u gehalo miyad chazak mimenu, baruch at Adonai, gal Yisrael. We continue in the middle of page 64. Cause us, our Creator, to lie down in peace, and raise us up, O Sovereign God, to renewed life and peace. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, guide us with your good counsel, and be our shield of mercy and of peace. Baruch atah Adonai, haporei sukkad shalom aleinu, ve'al kol amo Yisrael, ve'al Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Jerusalem. Continue with the Shamaru on page 65. Shamaru, v'nei Yisrael, v'nei Yisrael, et ha-shabbat la-asot, et ha-shabbat l'dorotam Shameru Bene Israel, Bene Israel, Et a Shabbat la Sot, Et a Shabbat, the Dorotam, the Ridola, Bene Uve, Bene Israel, O Tile Ola, Kishet Yami Masa. Let my mouth may declare your glory. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sahara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Leia, Elohe Rachel, Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor. We continue at the bottom of page 69. 
Prayer invites us to let God's presence suffuse our spirits, to let God's will prevail in our lives. Prayer cannot bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city. But prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. Baruch atah Adonai mechaye hako. Blessed are you, O God, who renews all. Atakadosh, Shimcha Hakadosh, Ukadoshim, Holyom, Yehalleluha Sela, Baru Hatadonai, Hael Hakadosh. As you're seated, we pray silently. happen in our lives, our, our lives and the world continues to move on. Don't we find that? The world doesn't stop. And uh, what's fascinating to me is this week, uh, my wife had some surgery and she's doing well, so she's going to be on my Misha Beirach list. I'm looking at someone whose wife is in a room right next to mine, so we'll have the same prayers for your wife as, as well as for mine. But it, it caused me to think of two things. First and foremost, often when we think of long-term illnesses, which this is not, 
the caregivers. You know, we should say prayers for the health of caregivers in general. We should think about those people who are uh, taking care of everyone in their life, and it takes an enormous amount of strength, and it's an ongoing and sometimes very challenging task. And then I was at uh, Beaumont Hospital, and so I was standing in line getting Starbucks, which, of course, everyone is doing, and I, I, I hear that... Uh, uh, someone standing in front of me and says, hi, Rabbi Loss. We didn't know, I know they were in there. And a doctor who was with his family sitting shiva the night before was doing a heart cath that morning. And I just know that sometimes that kind of commitment and service and ongoing involvement with the patient, when we think about the Misha Berach, it involves health for those who care and take good care of those who need their love. So add to the list tonight anyone who is a caregiver, someone who takes care of the community because they serve the community, someone who really and truly reaches out and on a daily basis takes care of a member of their family or perhaps even a friend just stops in to make sure that they're not alone, that they have someone by their side because we need them to be strong also. We need them to find good health and good spirit. So I add them to my list of Misha Berach today on page 72. size of an airplane hangar. Beautiful music was playing, everyone was dressed in their Shabbat best, and the mood was one of oneg, joy and calm, a readiness for the rest that Shabbat promises. I was sitting next to my dad and I gave him a zetz in the ribs and I said, Dad, I think there are Jews here. <laughs> in fact, there were a lot of Jews there. Over 5,000 from all over the world who had come to Orlando to attend the Union for Reform Judaism Biennials Conference. We came together to learn from each other and from top thinkers in our movement, to pray together for the work that we do and the strength to continue to do it, and to share a glass of wine together, of course. The bar was the busiest place in the convention center past 10 p.m. I can guarantee it was the only bar on earth that if you yelled, Rabbi, a lot of heads would have spun around. <laughs> As your rabbis, we pray that when you travel the world and someone engages you in conversation about who you are and which congregation you call home, you feel a strong sense of belonging when you tell them you're a member of Temple Israel. That if someone gives you a zetz in the ribs and said, hey, no one needs to belong to a congregation these days, you would have many compelling reasons to argue to the contrary. I have to share a moment of great pride for our Temple Israel that happened on Shabbat morning when all 5,000 plus attendees gathered again for services. Rabbi Rick Jacobs, president of the URJ, was speaking about audacious hospitality, the new mantra for our movement. He was drashing about how our foremother Sarah and forefather Abraham opened their tent wide to strangers who had arrived at their door. They asked no questions but ran to provide them with food, washed their feet, and tended to their camels. 
In our modern day, it was like the recent hashtag, Pour Ouvert, which in French means open door, tweeted out by millions of Parisians, telling strangers their doors were open for shelter and safety, no questions asked, nothing expected in return. It serves as a modern day example of audacious, and I might add brave, hospitality. Rabbi Jacob explained how our matriarch and patriarch are paradigms for our own congregations and how we must ensure that our congregation's doors are open that wide to the stranger, the widow, the poor, the searching, the questioning, and most of all, the non-Jew. On 9-11, Rabbi Jacobs was the rabbi of Westchester Reform Temple. When the attacks occurred, he didn't close his nursery school. He sent out a message of pour ouvert, open doors. He encouraged parents to come to their children at the congregation instead of taking them home and find safety and comfort there together. He threw the doors of their congregation open in a gesture of comfort and solidarity and, of course, audacious hospitality. But what Rabbi Jacob said next nearly made the Temple Israel contingency fly out of our seats. He used Temple Israel and our own Rabbi Loss as his example of modern-day audacious hospitality at its best. He recalled the day when Rabbi Loss picked him up from the airport on his visit to town after having just finished performing a funeral for a non-member. Rabbi Jacob said that this left an impression on him that has not diminished, nor has the impact left him unchanged. Imagine, he said to thousands gathered there, that the rabbis of the largest congregation in our movement, over 3,000 families strong, take time to pastor and serve non-members. To say that those of us from Temple Israel work felling would be an understatement. <laughs> to say that at that point my father's ribs were totally demolished would also be an understatement. So as my feet barely touched the ground, proud as I was to represent the congregation that not only practices audacious hospitality, but puts it at the center of all we do, I kept bringing to mind what Rabbi Michael Marmer had taught in his session about God. God, of course, is the most gracious of all hosts, contracting and contracting in order to make space for humanity, taking that hospitality to the audacious level of then creating humanity in his own image. God teaches us that humanity knows no color, no faith, no creed, and no boundary. We are one human family, and there are certain things we can do, should do, and must do in order to live together hospitably in this world that God gave us. And there is no doubt that we are being challenged, perhaps like we have never been challenged before, that the lines that divide us seem to be far more pronounced. In fact, sometimes they are all we can see. Those lines make it hard to find the courage and fortitude to throw the doors open be it to our country, our state, or even our hearts. But the doors of our hearts must always stay open. The doors of our country should stay open to those searching asylum. And the doors of peace can stay open if we could all just realize our common humanity, home, and creator. Must, can, should. Let's explore those words a bit. Rabbi Marmer, who is the dean of the rabbinic school of Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion in Jerusalem, taught a session at the biennial about how we need to talk about God. He said that while it's difficult to speak of what God is, or perhaps if even God exists, or if even we need God, he taught that there are certain things we should say, we can say, and we must say. He writes, and I quote, Attempts to imagine God and articulate God are bound to fail. At stake is the quality of our failure. Think about that phrase. At stake is the quality of our failure. It's not that Rabbi Marmer is saying to us, don't try to talk about God because you will inevitably fail. Quite the opposite. He's pleading, talk about God a lot. Do not allow the enormity of the subject, capital S, to deter you from engaging in what should be, what can be, and what must be the most important conversations of our lives. Our audaciously hospitable hosts, capital H, demands this of us. I think the same is true of our congregation. Recently, we undertook a years-long process of strategic planning, 
putting every aspect of Temple Israel under a microscope and asking ourselves, what should Temple Israel look like? Our physical space, our online presence, our footprint in the community. Then we asked, what can Temple Israel become? A community meeting place, a coffee house, a shelter through literal and figurative storms? And perhaps the most important question of all, what must Temple Israel do in order to take our audacious hospitality to the next level? Does that mean we travel together more so that our conversations go deeper than chatter over Oneg cookies? Should we explore how we can bring Temple Israel to our teens on their soccer fields and in their dance classes so that we are more to them than a Bima or a Hebrew classroom? The conversations were numerous and long and sometimes circular, but like Rabbi Marmer implored, the only thing at stake was the quality of our failure. I am proud to say that not only did we not fail, but we went beyond the conversations and have begun implementing our shoulds, cans, and musts. I am so proud to say that your congregation is already doing so much of what the movement is hoping to add to their list of ways of being audaciously hospitable. At the biennial, the URJ overwhelmingly passed a resolution of inclusion for LGBTQ people in our congregations. Temple Israel has already held meetings addressing the issue of inclusion for this community with over 200 people at each event. And we hold a support group for teens who are transitioning and another for their parents. At the Women of Reform Judaism's meetings, they spoke about how we can better support women who have lost babies due to miscarriage, stillbirth, and infant death. Our sisterhood women were able to rise and say that Temple Israel offers a support group and they have all been busy knitting little blankets to give to hospitals, who then give them to parents to wrap their children in or bury their children in. There were so many examples of our biennial group being able to stand up and say, yes, we are doing that because we should, because our incredible staff makes it so we can, and because Jewish tradition and values mandates that we must in order to truly call ourselves a kehila kedosha, a holy congregation. And I believe that we are a Kehila Kedosha because of the help that we offer, the people who dedicate themselves to our mission, and the audacious hospitality we show to those we know and love and those who are new to our community. Rabbi Jacobs told each of the 5,000 people sitting in that room that the best way to assure the Jewish future is not just that Jews marry Jews or that every single Jewish person has a bar or bat mitzvah, he said that the way we secure the future of Judaism is to make sure that Jews fall in love with Judaism. And as we look out into the world that seems so terribly broken, how can we, the members of this Kehila Kedosha, this holy congregation, take those lessons into the outside world and create an Olam Kadosh, a holy world? Rabbi Larry Hoffman suggests that we do it within the confines of our rich tradition of reform Judaism guided by six principles. One, absolute commitment to the state of Israel. Two, a recovery of the prophetic call for justice, righteousness, and compassion. Three, eliminating barriers to full participation by everyone in all congregations. Four, grappling with our texts and accessing their wisdom so as to relate to our world. Five, feeling a sense of responsibility to all Jews and all the world, calling on us to fulfill the mission of being or lagoyim, a light to the nations. And six, striving to enrich our own lives personally through spirituality, community, and commitment to what God asks. I get the first five. They fit well into Temple Israel's mission. But what of the sixth? A commitment to what God asks. How do we know what this is? I would argue we get our answer from three places. First, Rabbi Jacobs, open your doors, open them wide, pour ouvert. Let, uh, let all who hunger for community and tradition and peace walk through whichever door they need to enter and be welcomed warmly in an environment of audacious hospitality. Second, Rabbi Marmer, never stop asking what we should do for those who seek us, what we can do for those who join us, and what we must do 
in order to be an or lagoim, regardless of our fear or actual failure to do so when we try. And finally, the prophet Micah. Micah makes it all clear. What is it that God asks of us? Only to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. In the final analysis, it is only that. Use your voice for justice, lead with love and compassion, and no matter what, make sure your hospitality to your friend, to other people, to God, is always audacious. Shabbat Shalom. Page 222, we raise our voices together. Executive Committee, Dr. Ed Royal, to come forward now for the congregational announcements. Shabbat shalom. Well, I have to tell you, I was in Orlando for the biennial as well, and it was an exhilarating experience. And if you have a chance, two years from now, December the 6th through the 10th, it will be in Boston in 2017. Start thinking about it. We need a bigger contingency there. We had about 15 people, and I'll tell you, everybody enjoyed it to the max. So mark it on your calendar. Young families are invited for a fun and festive evening celebrating Shabbat and Hanukkah together. Come in to, to participate in crafts, a latke dinner, songs, and havdalah as we appreciate the miracles all around us. Children 12 and under with a December birthday will receive the gift of a Jewish book. Reservations must be made by Monday, November the 30th. Saturday, December 5th. Saturday, December the 5th. <laughs> it's important. It should be in the announcements. Cantor Smolash will take you on, an, on a journey to experience Tefillin, an ancient, sophisticated, cybernetic system to remap reality beginning Tuesday, December the 8th. 
this Kabbalistic soul body interface will provide real time spiritual data about your environment and allow you to integrate high level consciousness into your day to day decisions. That must be good. No experience with tefillin is necessary. All genders are welcome. Bring your own set of tefillin or use class pairs that will be provided. I promise you there will be plenty of seats, so show up just tefillin. <laughs> and, and like a tefillin, I'm going to wrap up the announcements now. You can experience Shabbat on Friday, December the 11th like never before, but really like a lot of times before. It's Shabbat Unplugged. We've all been there. We love it. It's a joyful, prayerful, song-filled, rockin', jumping, moving, grooving, spiritually soothing Shabbat worship. So please show up for that. And tonight after services, join us for the Oneg and Shabbat greetings. And on behalf of the members of the Board of Trustees and the Executive Committee, let me wish all of y'all a Shabbat <laughs> audacious shalom. I think we should have like a, a comedy Shabbat night and just have Ed come and deliver the announcements. <laughs> that would be great. So we turn now to the conclusion of our service. We are on page 189. I would like to invite those members of the congregation who are 11 years old and younger to join us on the Bema. We have a few. So for 11 years, you've been watching one of my sons running up on the Bema at this time. And this is a very um, a transitional moment in our family's life because Benji has one more Shabbat, and then he will be 12. <laughs> and so next week will be his last Shabbat at this moment. Please rise, page 189. <laughs> Atet kirula li yotzer bereishi Shelo asano ekigaye aratso Velo samanu kemishpachot adama Shelo sam helkeinu kahem Vekor aleinu kepol hamonam Vanachnu korim Vumishacharim Please be seated. He said to me, you should have said it next week, and he's right, but I was, he was so excited to come up, so. <laughs> I'll say it again next week. <laughs> we turn to the words of Kaddish now as we turn to the task of memory, and we think about those who we've lost in the period of slow shame the last 30 days, how they've meant so much to us, how they've been such a part of our lives. Irving Berenbaum, Newton Berlin, Arthur Braverman, Dr. Easton Brodsky, Alexander Bruni, Mildred Chad, Donald Colville, Dr. Robert Feldman, Stephen Froelich, Murray Gittleman, Janice Halprin Goodman, Carol Horwitz, Stacy Fag Jacobson, Dr. Gerald Kahn, Norman Klein, Dr. Thomas Covan, Shirley Kramer, Muriel Kushner, Florence Lachman, Jennifer Laxner, Norma Lane, Arthur Lempert, Ruth Levine, John Mulhern, Eleanor Peltz, Joanne Randall, Pierce Rosenthal, Eleanor Selvin, David Langshan, Bob Stillman, Donald Velik, Lenore Dunsky Weiss, Jackson Williams, Abe Winogrand, Dolores Wolf. And we remember those whose yard sites fall at this time. Dr. Walter Baghdad, Molly Weiner Baghdad, William Ford Baines, Edna Barris, Dr. Gerald Bennett, Lynn Berger, Stanley Ehrlichman, Leo First, Molly First, Norma Galper, Sylvia Goldberg, Fanny Gorin, 
William Hacker, Phyllis Hendrick, Elliot Kaplan, Irene Keeps, Ray Prague-Klein, Etel Kucherova, Doris Levin, Goldie Le Levin, Corinne Levitsky, Frederick Miller, Ida Rogovin, Arnold Royal, Irving Rubin, Ruby Sampson, Arlene Starr, Julia Studenberg, Frida Suskin, Sarah Weiss, William Gear, Marvin Peel, Hi Rocklin, Ruth Cohen, David Kluger, Al Baker, Janet Kushkin, William Robert Schwartz, Nancy Konigsberg, Jeffrey Kaminer, Mark Belgrad, Mildred Winston, John Costanza. Tehei Nishmotehem, Sororpit Sorachayim. May their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life and memory as we turn to page 199. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba ve'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayecho nuv'yomecho nuv'chaye d'cho b'et Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'yimru amen yehe shemei rabba mevorach le'olam ome omaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase Vita dar vita la vita lal shemeda kucha brihu le e la min ko bir khata vishirata tush bechata venechamata tamiran be alma vimru amen yehe shlama rabba min shemaya bechayi malenu ve al ko yisrael vimru amen o se shalom bimromav hu ya se shalom Alenu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu ve'al kula. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu, odiavo shalom aleinu ve al kula salam aleinu ve yako ola salam 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 aleinu ve yako ola salam salam. Shalom Aleinu, Odiavo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kula. Odiavo Shalom Aleinu, Odiavo Shalom Aleinu, Odiavo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kula. Shabbat Shalom.